Our boy managed to navigate through the crowd to see what the commotion was about. He witnessed Chen Shuli kneeling while Cheng Jie of the Cheng family criticized him, taunting him to stand if he could. When Chen Shuli attempted to stand, Cheng Jie kicked him, mocking him. Observing this, our boy refrained from intervening, mindful that if the Cheng family recognized him as the third prince, it could lead to trouble. He found himself in a dilemma whether to aid Chen Shuli or remain uninvolved. Before he could decide, the girl who had bumped into him earlier stepped forward, reprimanding Cheng Jie of the Cheng family for going too far. Cheng Ji, eyeing her like a predator, identified her as the eldest daughter, Miss Chen Mao Yun, and dismissed her involvement, ordering her to step aside. Suddenly, a system prompt interrupted our boy's thoughts, urging him to discover a genius born with a strong sense of integrity. Cheng Ji, incensed, shoved the girl forcefully, but our boy swiftly caught her before she could fall. Concerned, he offered his assistance, asking if she needed help. Meanwhile, Cheng Ji, displaying the intelligence of a brick, ordered our boy to bring the girl to him and also to fetch Blackie for a soup, enraging our protagonist. Refusing to comply, our boy and Blackie expressed their disdain for Cheng Ji's words. Chen Shuli intervened, blocking Cheng Ji's path and demanding he stop his madness. Ignoring him, Cheng Ji arrogantly questioned how dare Chen Shuli speak to him. Finally, our boy and Blackie decided they had had enough and released a bit of their aura, advancing toward the block-headed Cheng Ji. Impressed by our boy's strong aura, the girl Chen Mao Yun found herself drawn to our boy. Cheng Ji noticed our boy's attire resembling that of the Imperial Guards and inquired if he was one of them. Our boy remained non-committal, prompting Cheng Ji's demeanor to suddenly become friendly, with a hint of sweat on his face. He quickly apologized and pleaded for forgiveness, acknowledging his offense and vowing not to forget our boy's mercy. Our boy, displaying his wit, assured Cheng Jie that he would not make things difficult for him and advised him to return home. As Cheng Jie departed, signaling his men to follow, our boy turned to the system to inquire about the person with great integrity it had mentioned. The system identified Cheng Shuli as possessing rare talent in governance and the ability to deter evil spirits. Excited by the system's ability to detect talents, our boy learned that it had certain limitations in sensing and displaying information. Cheng Shuli expressed his gratitude to our protagonist for his assistance, promising to repay him in the future. Our boy, considering taking Cheng Shuli under his wing, surprised him with the offer of a significant gift. Meanwhile, Cheng Zhan rebuked his son, Cheng Ji, for being deceived, reminding him that Imperial Guards couldn't leave the royal capital. Suspecting our boy might be the third prince, he pondered if our boy had escaped his punishment at the border. Seizing the opportunity to boost the Cheng family's reputation, Cheng Zhan instructed his son to arrest our boy and take him to the royal capital, hoping to elevate their family's status. The next day at the inn, Blackie asked our boy if he truly wanted to destroy the Cheng family for the sake of Cheng Shuli. Qin Jun just nodded, confirming Blackie's question. Hearing this, Chang Changqian approached, asking why our boy wanted to destroy the Cheng family. Our boy waved for her to stop and sipped his tea, telling her it's none of her business. This response made her annoyed, and she approached our protagonist, telling him she is the daughter of the patriarch of the Xunling sect, and how dare he be rude to her. Trying to attack our boy, he slapped her hand away. He felt like he was holding the softest and squishiest pillow, which made him short-circuit. To confirm and feel it, because this chance didn't come easily, he squeezed it. Oh my. It's kind of soft, our boy remarked inwardly. Ahem, don't mess around in broad daylight, our boy told her. Embarrassed and blushing, she told our boy that he's going too far. What's going on? asked Daji, coming down from the first floor. Seeing Daji, our boy rushed to her, asking if she slept well. Daji rushed and stopped our boy from getting close to the person with the black cloak. Why? asked our boy, 
To which Daji replied that he has demon chi. Demon chi? Asked our boy, looking at the man in the black cloak, thinking that since ancient times, good and evil existed, and good existed in the Dry Moon Kingdom, asking himself how there can be a demon cultivator now. Chin Jun tried to see the cloaked guy's cultivation level, but couldn't do to the person having high cultivation. He thought to himself that he would have to keep an eye on the demon cultivators and what they are up to in the Dry Moon Kingdom. Chang Changqian interrupted our protagonist's deep thoughts. She thought our boy was in a hurry to take her back to her sect, throwing a tantrum. Our boy nodded, agreeing with her argument. When the family kicked through the door of the inn and Cheng Ji shouted that he had arrived, the people in the inn were thinking who would be bold enough to mess with the Cheng family. Both Cheng Li and our boy gave each other murderous looks, and Cheng Jie broke the intense silence telling our boy he actually didn't dare to leave. Cheng Qiankian went close to Daji, asking who Cheng Jie is. Our boy replied that Cheng Jie wished to meet his ancestors, a wish he could easily fulfill. Cheng Jie, seeing Daji and Cheng Qiankian, declared that, from today onwards, they belong to him. He ordered his men to rush and capture our boy, calling him a fugitive third prince, and take him back to the royal capital. They quickly charged towards our boy with hostility on their faces, saying that Daji and Chang Qiankian should be left alone, and he will deal with them personally. Cheng Ji, thinking with Sung the staff between his legs, approached Daji and Chang Qiankian with a lustful expression on his face. Daji looked at him in disgust and hump, accumulating Qi on her hand. She released her energy, pushing Cheng Ji away. He got angry and began to tell Daji they will regret that she dared to hit the young master of the Chung family. Our boy and Daji looked at him with serious expressions. Suddenly, a system mission was triggered, instructing our boy to kill Cheng Jie and his father, offering 500 experience points and 2,000 experience points, respectively. Additionally, destroying the Chung family would reward 3,000 experience points and unlock a chance to open inheritance talent. With determination, our boy readied his weapon, knowing his fast target had come knocking on his doorstep. As Cheng Jie continued his tirade, demanding they bow before him, our boy swiftly acted that sent Cheng Ji to the afterlife in style. Completing the first quest to kill Cheng Ji, our boy gained 534 experience points. Nonchalantly blowing the smoke from the muzzle of his weapon, our boy remarked on the noise. Meanwhile, the man in the black cloak contemplated acquiring such a powerful artifact. Changing his plans, our boy decided not to depart quickly for the Zhuan Ling sect. Instead, he instructed Daji or Blackie to take Cheng Jai's lifeless body and proceeded to destroy the Cheng family. Reach 100 views and 10 likes. Ill upload fast. I will be going to one to two days upload.